Hey guys, this is Gotta Love Breath. I have decided I am going to be super cool for all of you, like uber cool, and I'm going to do three vlogs all in a row tonight. That's right, because I am awesome like that. Bow down before me, for I am your god. Come, get me my root beer, and my wally figures, and my yukinagado, and we shall get this started. Curl up with your little tiny plushie you've got there, if you've got one. If, if you don't have a plushie, you know, you should really get one because they're good emotional support for you because you can just grab a plushie and you can hug it and cuddle with it. But if you don't have a plushie, you can't do that. So you don't understand what us with plushies feel when we feel the plushie. And the plushies are so cute, especially if you get like a Yuki Nagato plushie and you've got it there and it actually looks like Yuki Nagato. It's not one of those crappy Yuki Nagato plushies. And you like plushie. And you're like, yay, you grab the Yuki plushie and you're like, gonna with it and you go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you're such a cute Yuki plushie. <coughs> so anyways, um, today I was watching Let the Right One In. And this is a really good movie. I want to just go out and say it. It's a beautiful film. It's a beautiful film that let me down at the end. Just getting that out of the way early on so you guys don't go, what? You like this movie, but then, then again, you kind of didn't like it? And it's not that I kind of didn't like it. I liked it a lot. I was enjoying just reveling in this film. And the, there's very few movies where you can really revel in, where you're watching it and you're completely immersed with the characters and the atmosphere and the filmmaking process. But then it slips up at the end. It's like they choked. It was a cop-out. That's how I felt about it. I'm kind of curious about how other people felt about this ending because I've never heard people complain about the ending to let the right one in before. Of all the reviews, of all the critiques I've read, no one said that the ending was weak. I personally felt the ending was very, very weak. So for anybody who has seen Let the Right One In, like, please explain to me um, why you like the ending or why you didn't like the ending or whether you agreed with me or not about this particular movie. Because I love hearing people's responses in my mailbox because it makes me feel so special and important. And that's what bloggers are for, to feel special and important while yapping about their everyday problems with real people out there. So anyways, we're talking about... What were we talking about again? Yuki Nagato plushies? Oh yeah, we were talking about Let the Right One In. This is a vampire movie about a 12-year-old vampire, this, this little girl, who forms this real strong relationship with this 12-year-old kid, and they end up forming this sort of strange bond. This 12-year-old kid, the one that's not the vampire, the guy, is really getting bullied around at school, like the bullies like just push him around and beat him up, and like it, it's, it's not cool. Bullying is, bullying is not cool, people, just so you know. And so he talks about it with this little vampire girl, and the vampire girl tells him to, you know, fight back. Don't be such a wussy all the time. Just, you know, if they punch you, you punch them harder. So he ends up training and all this other stuff. He ends up working out a little bit, even though he's not really working out all that much when you watch the movie. But it's all about their relationship, and that's all I can really say without giving away a lot of the essence of this movie. It's one of those sorts of films... I wish that when people sit down to watch it, they're not told it's a vampire film. But that's the only way you can really... When you pick up the front cover of the DVD, it says, Best Vampire Movie Ever, said the Washington Examiner. And a vampire tale like no other, mesmerizing, says Newsweek. Here's my problem. I personally felt that when this story was being written, you're not supposed to know it's a vampire story until later. And that's one of the big flaws of the advertising, I suppose. Because when you see the movie, you can see where they're giving hints at the fact that she's a vampire and they're leaving the trail of breadcrumbs. But the issue is we already have the conclusion. We know she's a vampire because it's been advertised as thus. And it sort of stomps on the storytelling because this is supposed to be a tale. You're supposed to walk into it fresh. You're not supposed to know what's going on. You're not supposed to know why these people are getting killed off and the connection between her and the murderer. You're not supposed to know all this kind of stuff, but you piece it together within like the first 20 minutes because you've been told. You've been told by the cover of the DVD what this story is. And 
I feel that marketing does this to movies. Oftentimes you see the most essential bits of the story in the trailer and it belittles the quality of the film. Beautiful film, wonderfully acted. One of the things I appreciate very much about this is that it feels like an art film. And I like art films. I like the way they're shot. I like the way they're produced. I like the way they're put together. It, this the, is very un-Hollywood. It's not a vampire story in the sense of something like the most recent vampire tales. I'm not going to point fingers. I'm not going to say the title of the one that's the most obvious because everybody always draws comparisons whenever you say vampires this particular sort of story comes to mind because it's a pop culture sensation that doesn't deserve to be a pop culture sensation. Now, I'm going to get a lot of hate mails from people, but honestly, the the T, the, sh, sh, the movie and the book that starts with T and ends with T is terrible. Absolutely a god-awful phenomenon that deserves to be wiped off the face of the planet. But that's just my personal opinion. If you love it, you love it. That's fine and dandy. But for me, it belittles the title of vampires and makes it into a kitty bopper pop culture phenomenon that it was n never deserved to be. Vampires are a particular set of characters, and they need to be portrayed, portrayed, they need to be portrayed right on film. And in the case of Let the Right One In, they're portrayed perfectly. This is an actual vampire story, finally. After all of the imitators, after everything, this is an actual story where a vampire is portrayed in a realistic sense, realistically, as if vampires were to actually exist. It doesn't feel gimmicky. It never feels cocky. It never gets bogged down in special effects. In fact, there are hardly any special effects in this film. And when there are special effects, they usually look terrible, but the point is there are very little. It's shot as a drama, which is like a revolution in and of itself. You feel like taking this movie to Hollywood executives and saying, this is what I want. This is what I want when I go to go see a science fiction film, when I go to see a fantasy film, when I go to see these sorts of films in general, I want to see them directed in this fashion. I don't want to see any of your overblown Hollywood goodness where you overglorify everything when every surface is too shiny, everything is, is so contrived and so formulaic that you can't seem to get any sort of story substance out of it. No, I want something like this that has the balls to be melancholy has the balls to sometimes just be mundane, just like everyday life. There's scenes in this movie where there's hardly any music. It's just the characters communicating with each other. And how beautiful is that in a film where they don't have, feel like they have to emphasize it with, overblown, uh, with an overblown orchestral score, or they don't feel like they have to draw out the mundane to be anything more than what it is. And... I'm not saying that the film itself is mundane. It's just that it takes scenes for these characters. Like, there's a scene where one of the, ma the main characters is brushing his teeth. And he runs into his mother. And she's brushing her teeth. And they kind of look at each other and they're both brushing their teeth. And it's kind of like this weird sort of thing. It was an interesting scene. It was almost completely unnecessary. But it shows that there's this... Just from the expressions that they have on each other's faces, it shows that the kid has a relationship with his mother, a warm relationship with his mother. The mother has a warm relationship with her child, and that that relationship is there without any dialogue whatsoever, just the, them brushing their teeth. How insanely awesome is that when you see something like that on film? That being said, there's all this buildup, there's all this character development, and by the end of the film, you feel like it was all for nothing. That's how I personally felt. The screenplay, more than concluding, it feels like it just peters out. It just kind of goes, pop, and that's it. It just goes. It's gone. The story is completely out the window. It's concluded, and you see it conclude, and you understand how it's concluding, and you understand how that's the emotional wrap-up, but you don't feel the emotional wrap-up or at least I didn't, sort of sat there and went, 
Okay, so I just sat through that entire movie with all of this wonderful character development. And it's fantastic. Fantastic film all the way up until this point. But you're not giving me any sort of payoff. There's no emotional resonance with this ending. This is going to be the sort of film that with a lot of people, it's going to stick with you. It's going to stay with you well after you watch it. I know it is for me. And anything that leaves this sort of resonance is something to be admired. And I'm definitely giving this a, f a 4 out of 5, even though, even though the ending let me down so much. It's the sort of film that I think and everybody who loves film should see. This is Gotta Love Breath, and I am signing out. Let the right one in and watch Let the Right One In, even though that's sort of a strange title. Yeah, it is, but, you know, it's suiting to whatever the hell you want to classify this film. Alrighty.